All of tonight's stories will be read by my narration group called the Black Legion of Screaming Banshees. Enjoy. I had a recurring nightmare starting when I was four until I was ten. I was in my living room, my grandmother's kitchen, my classroom, or friend's house. Then I'd be in my bedroom. It was nighttime, but a cold, bright light filled the room. The moment I realized the dream had shifted to my bedroom, I would hear a series of approaching footfalls. Set atop a faint, high-pitched whir, it was coming just for me. It implored me to look, but I crouched down on the floor. With my hands over my head and my eyes squeezed shut, it started at the foot of the stairs. But it quickly grew closer. It made its way into my room. Then, it was right behind me. It wanted me to look, but I wouldn't. Then, I'd be awake and safe in my dark bedroom. During that six year period, I was also sleepwalking. I usually didn't make it too far, but once when I was nine, my mother found me lying in the middle of our street at 2 a.m., and her scream nearly woke the entire neighborhood. I'll never forget that scream. After that, my parents tried locking me in my room with a baby monitor for safety. But twice more, I miraculously managed to sleepwalk my way out of the locked room during my episodes. My parents still ask me how I accomplished that, as if I had any idea. The last time I had the nightmare as a child, it ended differently than all the others. It was the same up until the end, but this time I ignored the wisdom of my fear and I let it convince me I could look. I peeked over my right shoulder and saw a brilliant human-shaped white light with an incredibly large head. The nose seemed to crescendo and then everything went silent. I woke up and somehow I knew waking up wouldn't be enough to keep me safe anymore. It took me almost an entire summer to feel like myself again, after the last dream. I'm 34 now, and the nightmares are back. I haven't been sleeping very well, and I'm losing time. Earlier this week, I took my lunch break at the park next to my office building and returned 55 minutes later than I expected. Two days ago, I took a short walk up the block to grab some paper towels from the corner store just before it closed at 9 p.m. and I got home at 11.32 p.m. without them. Yesterday morning, I was getting ready for work and the next thing I knew it was 5.30 p.m. and I was still sitting at the kitchen with my half-finished breakfast in front of me. I have no recollection of what I was doing during any of that time. Last night I had the nightmare, and I looked, and this time it spoke. I can't bear to put in writing what it said, but I do want to tell you this. If you ever have a dream like mine, even a little like mine, don't look. No matter how much you want to, how much it pulls you to, even if it tells you it's safe to do so. Please don't look, because looking gives it permission. My wife has nightmares. It was her scream that initially woke me up. After my initial panic, I realized where I was and what was happening. This was the third time this week. Wake up, get up, turn on the lights, she pleaded through her panic. I took a deep breath and tried to slow my heart rate down. 
My wife was frantically trying to get free of the blankets which she had unintentionally wrapped herself up in during her restless sleep. The room was completely dark, and even now there was little difference between having my eyes opened and closed. Turn on the light, she begged once again. This was how she reacted to her particularly scary nightmares. For as long as I've known her, she has had sleeping issues, and random nightmares that would cause physical reactions like this. But she's never had them this frequently. I was chalking it up to the fact that she has been working insane hours lately, eating irregularly, and sleeping very little. After everything she'd recently been through, I was just happy that she was sleeping at all. She is a mental health therapist, and about a while back, one of the children she works with started confessing that her father was abusing her and her mother. Child Protective Services was called in to investigate, and as the authorities started to peel back the happy facade of his family, the truth was pretty dark. Eventually, the wife and daughter left, and he was placed on house arrest. There is an ongoing court case, and my wife had to testify last week. The day before she was supposed to give her statement in court, the father showed up and tried to attack my wife in the parking lot of her practice. Luckily, she was able to get back inside and lock the doors until the police arrived and took him into custody. Still, having a grown man running at her, yelling, You ruined my family, it was the only good thing holding me together, and God knows what else, scared her pretty badly. From what she told me, her expert witness testimony was so damning that the case could have ended right there. He just sat there in a cold fury. By the end of it, all I could see were his eyes. They were awful. All the hatred in the world, she told me over dinner that night. Sentencing would be tomorrow, and this whole thing would be over. Turn on the light, she was screaming again, and I realized that I wasn't going to be able to wait her out. Normally, as soon as the light was on, she would wake up enough to realize she was fine, calm down, explain what she had seen, and realize it was a nightmare. Of course, in the morning, she would never remember any of the dreams, or even that we had been awake in the middle of the night, so I was the only one that really got to experience these little adventures. It had been the same type of nightmare every night. She lays frozen in fear as something slowly descends towards her face. The first night, it was a massive spider lowering from the ceiling. Last night, it was some kind of monster coming at her. I wondered what it would be tonight. With a muffled sigh, I pulled myself up out of the bed, crossed the room, and hit the light switch. Blinking my way through stinging eyes struggling to adjust to a massive light change, I took in the scene. As expected, my wife went completely still when the light came on. I had to try hard not to laugh when I saw that tonight she was kneeling on her side of a bed staring into her pillow as if she was looking through it. Honey, you alright now? I asked. Dream. Bad dream. She mumbled as she started to lay back down and cover herself again. What was this one? I asked, still standing across the room, waiting for her to get settled before I flipped the lights back off. A man, standing over me, reaching his hand down towards me, she replied. Like I'd figured, it matched perfectly with the past two nights. But still, with dreams like that, it really was a wonder that she ever slept. My wife had just about settled herself in and was adjusting the blankets. In truth, she was already fully asleep again, so her movements were large and clumsy. I would have to remember this so I could pick on her in the morning. The comforter had fallen completely off the bed, and after a few seconds of frustration, she just leaned over, collected all of it, and piled the whole thing on top of her. A smile spread across my face, and I shook my head. As much as she hated when I said it, she really was so beautiful in those moments. Sleeping peacefully, hair wildly splayed against her pillow. With one last deep breath, I reached back to hit the light switch before my eyes could truly register what I was seeing. I froze with my hand on the light switch. Across the room was my wife's vanity, and in the reflection of a mirror I could see myself, my wife in the bed, and now that the comforter was off the floor, staring out from under the bed were the most hate-filled eyes that I had ever seen. I stared into those eyes, and they stared right back at me, as my heart began to hammer in my chest again, and I shook as every muscle in my body tensed at the same time. Cold fear, adrenaline, rage, and disbelief. 
I still can't understand the emotions that all crashed into each other during the moment my life changed. In an instant, he exploded out from under the bed, and the last thing I remember was my wife screaming again. It was her scream that initially woke me up. After my initial panic, I realized where I was and what was happening. This was the third time this week. The room was silent. It has been nearly a year since the attack, and my nightmares aren't getting any better. Have you ever truly felt like you were dying in a dream? Running was like running through wet cement. The terror was felt when you jolted awake from the nightmare. Sweating, heart racing, wanting to just run away, but it is so hard. Many claim that it is an escapism element that is in your life issues. Someone that hurts you, did you wrong, or was just plain mean. That is the excuse. This is an account of a nightmare that was acted out without remorse. Dreams of blood and chaos, slicing and cutting was the dream. Blood, blood. The irreversible damage was that I did not want it to be reversed. Deserving is deserving. I am not your typical man. I am a thin man to myself and quiet. Nerdy lurker on imager, typical weirdo, but not weird at all. As a teen, I was massively bullied, made fun of. My older sister fought my battles for me and I was grateful. I was smart, honor student, and rolled with the punches. As I grew older, my tolerance for bullying grew smaller. I was aging. I had friends, boyfriends, girlfriends, over it with that instance now. Strictly dickly now, if you will. I've always had nightmares as a child. Hallucinations about random shit. Cars, trucks. My hands were small and my dick was huge. Don't ask it. It was a weird period. My dreams, though, always consisted of a trigger element. I've always thought about murdering someone and getting away with it. My hellish thoughts needed to be acted out. Criminals these days are stupid as hell. As much information is given in movies and such. My story is about payback. Everyone has thought about it. If you could get away with it, would you? I'm sure a hundred percent of you would say yes. My nightmare was about a particular individual that fucked my life up. My dream was about me getting bullied again. The culprit was cocky, said what he had to say, showed his prowess on what he did and so forth. They say that the quiet ones are the scariest. I now know why this is true. As a bully victim, the quiet ones have time to think. The pain is temporary. The insults will fade. But the vengeance is brewing. Bullies, punks, assholes, better than thou's will get theirs. Quiet people brainstorm. We do not want to make a bloody mess. We calculate, watch, learn, rehearse, bide our time. So there was an instance when we had to go and mow our aunt's lawn. He did not know about the rocks tucked behind the blades of said lawnmower. <laughs> It wouldn't start. Hey, um, you check it out. 
As he pulled the throttle, the shrapnel flying into his face was priceless, to say the least. Kind of reminded me of an art assignment. I'm sure I won't have nightmares anymore. Oh, and the grass looked fabulous. There was blood and chaos. Mm, I won't say chaos. It wasn't. Happiness ensued. The ending is of this. There are loud nightmares. Screaming nightmares. The ones that need a beware sign are the quiet ones. As long as they are quiet, you need to worry. If you don't, plan your funeral. Now. Bullies will always get their asses handed to them. If you choose the quiet ones, it will be a nightmare. Sadly for you, you won't wake up. When I was a child, paranormal experiences were nothing new to me. They happened often enough that I came to embrace them as just another unpleasant part of life. Here are some of my experiences in the order of significance to me. All of this is true, so feel free to ask questions. The earliest phenomena happened when my mother was still pregnant with me. My parents had a two-bedroom apartment in the Bronx in New York City. My seven-month pregnant mother was home alone trying to get some restful sleep. She says it was pretty early in the morning and I was keeping her up with repeated kicks. She was lying there waiting for me to stop when suddenly the light in the other bedroom turned on. My father was working a late shift at the hospital and wasn't due back until morning. Assuming it was someone trying to rob us, she slipped out of bed, grabbed the phone to call 911, and hid in the closet. As she waited for the police, terrified, the light turned off and then back on three times. When the police finally knocked, she sprinted through the apartment to let them in. She says she never looked in to see who or what was there, but as she ran past the room, the light turned off one final time. Two heavily armed cops searched the entire apartment and found no evidence of a break-in. I guess I forgot to mention it, but the room with the light had just been finished being furnished for me. My parents and the police chalked it up to being faulty wiring, but... I know better. That was just the first time wiring would suddenly become faulty around me. When we lived in Florida, I was 10, home alone after school and watching TV. It was close to Christmas, so the house was decorated as such. Out of nowhere, on a brilliantly sunny December day, a deafening lightning bolt struck outside the window behind me. Instantly afterward, I could hear loud footsteps upstairs. TV turned to gibberish and all the Christmas decorations turned on. I ran and hid under the Christmas tree behind the presents until my parents got home. Again, it was attributed to faulty wiring. When I was five, my family lived in Texas. I was obsessed with dinosaurs. I was sure there were T-Rexes buried in my backyard and tried to dig them up like any overzealous five-year-old would. I even had one of those invisible dog leashes, but for me, it was an invisible dinosaur named Lizzie. I took Lizzie everywhere. She was my imaginary friend. I always hung up Lizzie by my door before bed. One night, I woke up glued to my bed. I was utterly unable to move, scream, breathe, or even cry. Standing over me was Lizzie's empty collar. I was overjoyed that my best friend had come to life to protect me, until to my horror, instead of protecting me, she started attacking me. I could feel bites all over my body. Eventually, everything faded into black. When I woke up, Lizzie was draped across the foot of my bed. My mom asked me where the scratches on my face came from. I told her I didn't know. I never played with Lizzie again. The final experience I'll leave here happened in North Carolina when I was 14. I woke up again in the middle of the night, unable to move, glued to my bed. 
this time it wasn't a toy above me. This time there was a little boy standing on my ceiling staring at me. He wasn't like any of the others. My room was freezing cold and the light from my closet shone through him and refracted around my room as if he were made of crystal or more likely ice. He stood there, upside down on my ceiling for what seemed like an eternity, until he suddenly smiled at me and then shattered into a million pieces. As soon as he shattered, the warmth returned to my room and I could move again. Since that night seven years ago, I've had nothing but nightmares. Not a single good dream. Either nightmares or empty black sleep. I just want to know, has any of this happened to anyone else? Or, as I fear, am I the only one? If you enjoyed this truly and would love to hear more terrifying tales such as these, then I must encourage you to become a follower of the Black Legion of Screaming Banshees. There will be a link to every single YouTuber that you heard here tonight in the description below. As such, I must also end this by saying, We are the Legion. We are the ones that keep you up at night. We are the sore, nightmarish visions that your mother warned you about. And with that said, I am out. This is the Voice of Nightmares.